We can use big O notation to describe the time complexity of an algorithm, that is, the impact of more input data on the time it takes to complete. We can also use big O to describe an algorithm's space complexity, the way the memory requirements of an algorithm differ according to the amount of input data. This video compares the time and space complexity of three examples – the linear search, the quick sort, and the merge sort. It assumes you're already familiar with the way these algorithms work. Let's take the simple linear search, for example. There are ten items of data here, which take up a certain amount of memory when the algorithm is running. The algorithm needs a little extra memory to store the target value and the pointer i which is used to control the loop and to reference each element of the array in turn. If we were to double the amount of data being searched, then in the worst case scenario of having to examine every item in the list, we would double the time it takes to find the target. So the time taken is proportional to the amount of data. The algorithm has linear time complexity, O, N. However, the amount of memory required over and above the amount of data being processed doesn't change. The algorithm itself still has only one target value and still needs only one loop counter. The space required by the algorithm remains constant, regardless of the amount of data. The linear search algorithm, therefore, has constant space complexity, O1. In fact, if you think about it, there are lots of examples of algorithms that have constant space complexity. The bubble sort, the insertion sort, the selection sort, each one of these has a certain number of control variables which is independent of the amount of data being worked on. Now let's consider the time and space complexities of the quick sort. Central to this algorithm is the partitioning process. In one particular approach, the leftmost item is chosen to be the pivot. Then, items at left and right pointers are compared with it and moved accordingly to generate three sublists. The pivot is now in a list of one item, and it is in the correct position. The partitioning process is then applied repeatedly to any sublists of more than one item, until every item is in a list of its own and therefore is in the correct position. Now consider a worst case scenario in which we want to quick sort a list that is already in order. That's right, quick sort still needs to do some work to check that the list is indeed in order. In this particular case, if we select the leftmost value as a pivot and then we partition the list, we're going to generate a sublist containing all of the data except the pivot value and a sublist of, well, no items at all. For a list of eight items, we've compared the pivot value with seven items to partition the list once. In order to partition the sublist of seven items, we now need to select another pivot and compare it with six items. The new sublist of six items requires five comparisons. The sublist of five items requires four comparisons. Four items requires three comparisons. Three items require two comparisons. And two require one. In fact, to complete the quick sort, in the worst case scenario, the total number of comparisons needed for eight items is 7 plus 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. That's a total of 28 comparisons for eight items. If instead we started with a list of 16 items, then we're going to need 16 plus 15 plus 14, you get the idea, a total of 120 comparisons. Clearly, the relationship between the amount of input data and the amount of processing required is not linear. In fact, you can probably already see that doubling the amount of data has roughly quadrupled the work needed. To put this another way, for n items of data, 
we need n minus 1 plus n minus 2 plus n minus 3 all the way down to 2 plus 1 comparisons. This can be shown to be this, which is this. The dominant term here is n squared, so the worst case time complexity of the quicksort is quadratic. O n squared. This tells us that the quicksort is not a good choice for lists that are nearly already sorted. Of course, there are lots of different ways you can implement a quicksort. For example, different implementations use different strategies for selecting a pivot value. However, even with, say, a randomly selected pivot, it's conceivable that the largest or the smallest item in the list will always be selected, in which case the time complexity will be n squared. So what about space complexity? Well, over and above the data that's being sorted, the quicksort normally maintains a few pointers. So it's tempting to conclude it has constant space complexity, just like the linear search. However, like other divide and conquer algorithms, the quicksort is normally implemented recursively. Each time the quicksort makes a recursive call, the current running instance of the program is suspended on the call stack and the next invocation is allocated a new stack frame on top of it. In our worst case scenario, each invocation of quicksort for a left hand side partition is only short lived because there isn't any work for it to do except to decide that there isn't any work to do. However, quicksort invocations for the right hand side partitions will build up on the stack. In fact, for n items of data, there will eventually be n stack frames on the stack before the stack can be fully dismantled. If the list is already in order, and the choice of pivot is such that the partitioning process always results in the largest possible partition, then the depth of recursion, that is, the number of nested invocations of the quicksort program, will be at a maximum. Each invocation of quicksort is passed a similar set of pointers when it's invoked, along with a reference to the data array. So each new stack frame is the same size as the previous one. If we double the input data, we must also double the additional stack space needed. Hence, quicksort has linear space complexity, O n, in the worst case scenario. In the best case scenario, each recursive invocation would examine about half of the original data set. So fewer recursive calls will be needed. In fact, doubling the input data would increase the depth of recursion by only one level. So in the best case scenario, quicksort has O log n space complexity. Finally, let's take a look at the merge sort. This too is a divide and conquer algorithm and therefore normally implemented recursively. In principle, the input array is split into two and each portion is split again and again until we have several sorted lists, each of one item. These single item lists are then merged back together, sorting as we go. Because the merge sort is normally implemented recursively, it will continue to break down an unsorted portion of a list while it can, and then merge two sorted lists as soon as it can. The amount of splitting and merging required depends only on the amount of data being sorted, not the extent to which it's already sorted. A list that is almost already sorted will take the same amount of time to sort as a list that is in completely the wrong order. Merging lists back together is the most processor intensive part of the merge sort. This is what determines the time taken by a merge sort. For the eight data items shown here, the merge sort has to perform a total of eight compare and append operations three times in order to build the final sorted array. That's 24 operations altogether. Since the log of eight is three, then, for eight data items, 
we've performed 8 multiplied by the log of 8 append operations. That's n log n time complexity, namely linear rhythmic. As we've already said, for a given sized input, the amount of processing needed is always the same, regardless of how well sorted the data already is. So the time complexity of a merge sort is always O n log n, in the best, worst and average case scenarios. So what about the merge sort's space complexity? Look at the lower portion of this diagram. The number of levels here represents the depth of recursion. If you were to double the input data, only one more level of recursion would be needed. This means that the space required for the stack frames alone would increase logarithmically, that is, with a complexity of O log n. However, each recursive invocation of the merge sort makes use of a temporary array whose size is equal to the total size of the two arrays being merged in that particular invocation. Ultimately, the final step of the merge sort needs a temporary array whose size is equal to that of the input array. If you were to double the input for a merge sort, you would double the size of the auxiliary array used in the final step. This means we have linear space complexity, O n, for the auxiliary array, plus O log n for the stack frames. Now, since linear complexity dominates logarithmic complexity, the overall space complexity of the merge sort is linear, O n. To summarise then, big O time complexity describes the impact of increasing the input data on the time taken for a program to run. Big O space complexity describes the impact of increasing the input data on the extra memory needed by the program, over and above the memory occupied by the input data. Recursive algorithms require additional stack space.